Next, we'll discuss briefly the unit conversions sheet. This will look familiar. It's similar to what you saw for topic 2, DQ1. What we're doing is taking a number of units and we're converting them to other units. You'll have a conversion factor table at the top and you'll apply those conversion factors to each of four different cases. Here, as discussed for the DQ, a good way to approach it is to first complete the final units, then determine the intermediate units to use to get you to that final units, then to complete the ratios, and finally, to calculate the final quantity. As an example here, let's take a look at the example in row 25. Here, we're converting fluid ounces per kilogram to milliliters per pound. So we start with fluid ounces in D25. And we're trying to get to milliliters per pound in P25. In order to replace the fluid ounces in the numerator with milliliters, we need to have an intermediate unit that uses milliliters in the numerator, fluid ounces in the denominator so that we can cancel those out. That gives us our first intermediate units in G25. Similarly, if we want to get rid of the kilograms in the denominator of D25, then multiplying by kilograms over pounds will do that and replace the kilograms with pounds in the final units. Now that we have the intermediate units, we consider the ratios. The first ratio, and when I select cell F25, you'll see that this is provided. So milliliters over fluid ounces corresponds in the table at the top to the entries in row 10. Let me highlight that. So here we have milliliters over fluid ounces. That means that our conversion is going to be the value in column L over the value in column I. And that's why we have L10 over I10. On the other hand, if we look at the second units, kilograms per pound, we see here that the ratio is I9 over L9. So we're actually taking the first quantity in the conversion factor, our constant of one in column I, dividing by the second conversion factor in column L. So in this case, we have one kilogram over 2.2 pounds, about corresponds to our units of kilograms per pound. Finally, if we look at the final quantity, that quantity just multiplies the initial units in C25 by the first ratio in F25 and the second ratio in I25. If you scroll down, you'll see that you'll have three factors for the first two parts, A and B, and then you'll have four factors for the last two, C and D. A couple of hints here as well. For part C, the hint is provided in the description here. You have a conversion factor that's applied twice. In this case, you have inches in the denominator. You want to replace it by centimeters, but you have a square inches that you want to replace with square centimeters. This means that your intermediate units are going to do the replacement 
twice where you have just one intermediate element over another intermediate element. For the final conversion here, you'll notice that we only have two items, miles per year, but that we have three intermediate factors. In this case, if we're going from miles per year to feet per hour, we need to replace years with hours. However, if you look at the table at the top, you'll see that we do not have a conversion directly from years to hours. However, what we do have is two different conversions, one from years to days, one from days to hours, that we can combine for part D to come up with the appropriate intermediate units. For the second part of the unit's conversion sheet, you'll be converting Fahrenheit to Celsius and Celsius to Fahrenheit using the formulas provided in text box six. In this case, just go ahead and follow the formula. In one, you're going to replace the Fahrenheit temperature with a cell reference to get to a corresponding Celsius temperature. In the other, you replace the Celsius temperature with an appropriate cell reference. And note that you're doing Fahrenheit to Celsius conversion in row 40 and Celsius to Fahrenheit conversion in row 41. That is an overview of the unit conversions sheet. Next, we'll discuss the currency conversion.